What's up? What's up? <clears throat> I have an iPad 8th generation here, which um, needs a charge port repair. Um, looks exactly like the iPad 7, so there's there's not much to it. Uh, as you can see here, the customer plugged something in, and it looks like the port got stuck inside. Then they stuck some super glue on there to try to take it out, and it's just one giant mess now. So, so just to, let me see. Let me see if I can show you guys what I normally do. To take these things off, I've already taken the logic board out of the housing. Which uh, let's see, I'm not gonna go over it again because it's in a previous video. But basically, what I do is basically what I do is I just um, use a spudger to to um, pry the logic board basically, and that that usually uh, removes that adhesive from it fairly easily. Um, one thing to note is that. These things are pretty sensitive right here, so I actually tore this. This is a um, sleep-wake sensor right here, and uh, this this is going to be fairly easy to, to replace. You just kind of pop it out, and then this is just held on by glue, so. And these things are just a few bucks a pop, so just be careful with that. And then I've, I've actually torn this one before, too, where I stuck the logic board in, and it just kind of bent it a little bit, and it just ripped this thing, so. that's It's not horrible to replace, but it's just added time, which kind of sucks you know so just be careful with those two things now in terms of the charge cord repair um, let's see I've done it I've done so many of these already that it's, it's really just not a thing anymore but there's a little bit of adhesive here just take this off I just kind of put it aside here and then um, so I just take my hot air gun um, I'm on 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow of 40 on my quick 861 DW. Um, let me see if I can make it a little bit more clear, maybe. The thing about these charge ports is that I think when people try to do it themselves, they, they're like maybe a little bit scared, scared of using too much heat, you know, and, and, um, and that's really the thing. You really just have to use enough heat in order to get this thing off, you know. So, like I said, 450 degrees Celsius with airflow 45, 40. You know, it's it's pretty high heat, you know. And and what I have here is really just like a it's a silicon mat right here. It comes from the hack from the Hako um, soldering iron. Yeah, it's just something that I had. Um, so you can just use a regular silicon mat, not a big deal, you know. And I I always direct the heat away. From the um, pads here, so that because there's nothing on the left side here, the logic board's on the right side. There's nothing on this side except for the silicon mat. Okay, so basically just heat it up, and then I just use my um, tweezer here, just kind of my, my hard tweezers to just kind of lift. I, I don't apply too much pressure on it, um, but basically you just want to leave the hot air station here until until uh, the solder melts, which usually takes a little while, maybe a minute or so. And then once the solder melts, then you can just gently lift the uh, the connector off of the logic board, and you'll you'll see it melt. It, you know, turns into liquid. So don't don't be afraid to put heat on this sucker. All right, just don't turn it up to like fifteen hundred degrees or something like that. <laughs> then you're in trouble. Um, okay, so the next thing I always do is. So after the connector's off, just make sure there's no pads missing, and then I just, I just flood this sucker with, uh, with flux. I tin, I tin my, um, my JBC tip, which is a C105, uh, was it 113, I think? I think it's a 0.3 millimeter tip, uh, flathead. And that's all I do. I'll leave the flux on there. You know what, I, I don't know what the, this is. So I just I'm gonna turn to the other side, double check. Make sure I didn't damage anything. Okay, that's nothing. Okay, so I just leave that flux on there, actually. And then, so, 7th generation, 8th generation charge ports are interchangeable. Um, so, um, so basically, yeah, so basically I just buy a bunch of these, you know, and, uh, and then next thing I'll do is I'll just pop some flux on the top side, too. Uh, and then I'll use my um, JBC um, C105-113 tip again, and then basically you just have to line up these little 
these little um, tabs right here so that you, you make you can tell that these things are aligned properly okay so first thing I always do is I just tack that one side first and I usually have my tweezers here okay so tweezers just just that one pin all right and then you come over here realign this one and then just do this pin and then after these two pins are tacked then I just go like this apply some gentle pressure make sure you have enough uh, solder on the end usually one one barely and you know you have to use good flux otherwise you're gonna get bridges and it's just gonna be a little bit of a mess all right um, and then so after you're done with the other side you add another little dollop of I think that's a little bit too much but yeah a little bit of dollop of um, solder and I just used Kester 44, which is 60, uh, what is it, 60, 6337, I think. Um, and then I just, you know, there's not much to it, all right? Uh, don't go like this, okay? So just do one row at a time. Push down. Apply a little bit of pressure, okay? Because you want the um, solder from the bottom to come up to the top and meet each other and have a nice little solid joint, okay? And you just go like this. Usually I'll kind of, I'll kind of do this like I mean I'll kind of go like this and just make sure that the dots aren't showing anymore you know and sometimes I'll just kind of go over it if I if I feel like there's not enough solder on one of the pads then I'll just do it again you know so that's it really so that's it that's it and then you get some IPA um, and then clean it up a little bit. And I'll get my Kim wipe here, clean this up, so I can put the sticky back on. Um, okay, so this is the sticker right here. Pop that back on, okay. Um, and then that's really it. I mean... You know, it's it's nice and clean. Um, it's done. There's there's not much to it. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So let me see if I can get let's see if my other camera works. I haven't done this in so long. All right, I just have crap everywhere. Let's see if I can get some light on here. Whatever. All right, you can kind of see it. <laughs> Um, so, let's see, I, I really need to replace this thing, so let me just see if I can do that before. Um, and I don't have any of these brand new ones. I mean, it's possible this still works, actually, so maybe I should just try it. Well, no, I better not leave it. Alright, it's just glued on, and this is all it is. Sleep-wake sensor, that's all it is, okay. So if your screen is black or something like that, and if, you, if your screen turns on and then it just turns black, you can't wake it, then usually it's this thing that's broken, okay. So let me just go get a donor. Let me pause this, get a donor, and then I'll stick it back on and reassemble it so you guys can test it. Alright, turns out I do have a new one here, so um, let me go back into the camera here and then so I can see it. Small camera. Alright, well that's not going to work. So anyway, let me get some double-sided tape real quick. So I can, you know what, should I just glue it? Maybe I'll glue and tape. I just use this duck double sided tape which serves the purpose um, Tessa tape is pretty good as well You're not going to need much for, for this right here. Um, but you can also use B, B7000 glue, whatever you want. If 
Problem is, I don't really know how far down it goes. Um, so maybe I should just, let me leave this out real quick. Reassemble it. And then we'll just glue it back on after. I mean, you could just, if you have a TriStar tester, you know, what you could do is just test it before you um, put it back into the housing. Otherwise, you'll have to take it back out if something is bad. Which I will probably do. Um, let me see. Okay, let's do this. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyways, let me, uh, okay, let me just do this, um, don't think the guy sent, so let me just do this, so I'm just going to pop it in, just make sure it's charging, right, I normally just leave it, if it goes up to 2 amps, Okay, so it's at 2 amps. I mean, you just have to trust me on that one. And then, so I'll just leave it reassembled, like, with the battery on, as I'm reassembling it. And then I'll stick a screen on it after. Um, for testing. Dang it. Not advised to use a metal tool <laughs> when the battery's connected. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so, okay, let's just put this one back. Okay, and then this one, I'll just kind of like put it in first and then I'll glue it. I'll um, use the adhesive to tack this back onto the side. Okay. All right, not much to that. That's the easy one. So that was thank God I didn't, it wasn't like the power flex because then it would cost me another like 15, 20 minutes. All right, good to go. Let's chuck this one. Um. Okay, so let's put these back. Okay, let's see. Okay, so these two screws here. Tighten them. Pretty tight. I mean, there's really not much else to it. Uh, like that. And, and it's really not. It's not a big deal that the um, battery's connected while you're doing doing these things. You know, the, the, the big thing is really the screen, since the screen is high-powered. So you, you definitely don't want to make sure the screen, the battery's connected when you're doing anything with the screen, because the backlight is... Um, that's that's what uses quite a bit of power, and that's what, you know, that that's when you'll blow backlight filters and all that stuff, okay? But these little accessories right here, they're, they're low voltage accessories, so it's, so it's not, you're not going to blow anything, basically. I mean, it's, there's a chance you will, but, um, um, odds are that you won't, alright? Alright, so that's done, let's see, um, hmm, uh, okay, let's put this bar back. Make sure everything is connected properly.
think maybe I lost one of these screws, maybe, or I don't know. What is this? Don't think this is the right screw for this, but nope, it is not. Let's try this one. Not quite sure what happened to that screw, actually. Don't think so. Well, this one will work. Okay, so let's go like that, and then, um, okay, so it's still charging at 2 amps, so I know that's pretty good. Um, oh yeah, I was, I was gonna say that what I've been doing also is using this B7000 right here. And, um, like, I mean, there's a flaw with these things, so I just put a little B7000 on this screw right here. These two screws, and then this one right here. Because they always seem to back out, you know. So, I, I mean, I don't know if it works or not, but that's just kind of what I've been doing now. But that's what causes the charge port to go bad, oftentimes. So, I'm just going to put a screen on this and test it, and but I'm pretty certain that it works. So, anyway, so that's how you do an iPad 8th uh, generation charge port repair, okay? Thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here, there's a coupon code that uh, gives you $50 off of our online course. So our online course, it was created by Tom and myself. Um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction. Um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering. So basically, we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get fifty dollars off. So thank you for watching our channel, and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.